I'm Dr. Bob McGrew from Cornerstone Family Medical Group in Modesto. This video segment on the tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis vaccination is part of a series of videos giving information on commonly recommended immunizations. This video is intended to supply general information. For specific decisions about your health, you should always talk with your personal doctor. In the U.S., vaccines have reduced or eliminated many infectious diseases that once routinely killed or harmed lots of infants, children, and adults. Excellent examples of this are the diseases of tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis, also and better known as whooping cough. The first question about vaccinations is always, why should I consider getting them for myself or my loved ones? Some might add, I've never heard of anyone I know having had these diseases, so why do we even need to think about vaccinations? Haven't these diseases pretty much disappeared? Perhaps vaccinations have more side effects than benefits. Those are good questions, and there are good answers for them. If you see me or my colleagues for an appointment in the office, we may not have enough time to give you detailed answers. So that is why we made these videos for your consideration. First, why haven't you heard much about people having the infectious diseases of tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis, also called whooping cough? It's because the vaccinations work. If the large majority of our population continues to get vaccinations, these diseases will be very uncommon, as they now are. That's a good thing. Let me tell you about these diseases. Tetanus is a severe, often fatal disease. The bacteria that cause tetanus are widely distributed through the world. These germs live in soil and street dust and are found in the waste of many animals. The tetanus bacteria are far too small to see and are very resistant to heat and germ-killing cleansers. You can get the infection through small or large wounds, such as from a cut or a nail puncture while working in the yard, or animal bites, or from accidents such as cutting yourself with a knife. People who get tetanus suffer from stiffness and spasms of the muscles. The throat can close, causing breathing and eating difficulties. In medical school, I once saw a man who was on a breathing machine for three months because of this muscle weakness from tetanus. Also, muscle spasms can cause breaks in the bones of the spine and long bones, and some people can go into a coma and die. An example is in this old picture from the 1800s of a French soldier with whole body muscle tightness from tetanus. Approximately 20% of reported cases end in death. Tetanus is infectious, but not contagious to other people. So unlike other vaccine-preventable diseases, immunization by members of the community will not protect others from the disease. Because tetanus bacteria are widespread in the environment, tetanus can only be prevented by immunization. If vaccination against tetanus were stopped, persons of all ages in the U.S. would be susceptible to this serious disease. Okay. You might say, maybe I'll consider getting the tetanus vaccine, but why is the diphtheria vaccine always included with the tetanus vaccine? Let me tell you a story from my wife Katie's family. Katie never got to know her mother's sister, who was named Gertrude. You see, Gertrude died at the age 16 in the year 1938 from a disease called diphtheria. She became ill with a sore throat, fever, and neck swelling at age 12. The toxins from the diphtheria bacteria caused heart inflammation. Four years later, she died from heart failure. You've probably never heard of this terrible disease because there is rarely a case of diphtheria in the United States thanks to the use of the diphtheria vaccine since the 1950s. Diphtheria also illustrates the answer to the questions we asked a little while ago. Haven't these diseases pretty much disappeared? So why do we even need to think about vaccinations? It turns out that the country that used to be called the Soviet Union and is now called Russia provides us with a good illustration of that. Now keep in mind that the disease germ is passed from person to person 
through coughing, kissing, sharing drinks, and other common ways. In the 1990s, during the era of turmoil following the overthrow of communism in the Soviet Union, the public health system of vaccinations collapsed all over that country. Diphtheria staged a roaring comeback, causing over 150,000 cases and several thousands of deaths in the 1990s. The same thing could happen in the U.S. if a lot of people failed to stay immunized to this disease. Of the three diseases we're considering now, pertussis, also called whooping cough, is the one you may have heard the most about in the last few years. It has recently been required for seventh graders to get a booster immunization for this disease. Also, there have been scattered reports of infants dying of pertussis, including a four-week-old child who died in Modesto a few years ago. Pertussis can be a severe illness, resulting in prolonged coughing spells that can last for many weeks. The Japanese traditionally call this the 100-day cough. These spells can make it difficult for a person to eat, drink, or breathe. Because vomiting often occurs after a coughing spell, persons may lose weight and become dehydrated. In infants, it can cause pneumonia and lead to brain damage, seizures, and mental retardation. Pertussis is spread the same way that diphtheria, flu, and colds and other respiratory germs are spread through sneezing, coughing, kissing, nasal secretions, touching things that ill people have recently touched or coughed on. In the U.S., prior to pertussis immunization, between 150,000 and 260,000 cases of pertussis were reported each year, with up to 9,000 pertussis-related deaths each year. These numbers have gone way down since the widespread use of vaccinations. However, in the last 20 years, pertussis cases have been increasing with peaks every three to five years. Fortunately, the number of reported cases remains much lower than levels seen at the pre-vaccine era. From 2000 through 2008, 181 persons died from pertussis in the U.S. 166 of these were less than six months old. The pertussis or whooping cough vaccine got a reputation for having bad side effects, such as high fevers, 30 years ago, when the older type whole cell derived vaccine was commonly used. The newer pertussis vaccine used nowadays has many fewer adverse reactions when compared with the older whole cell vaccine. It is called the acellular type and is abbreviated with a lowercase a in front of the P, as in Tdap. It has been available for use in the United States since 1991 and has been recommended for exclusive use since 1998. Pertussis cases occur throughout the world. If we stop pertussis immunizations in the U.S., we would experience a massive resurgence of the whooping cough, pertussis disease. A study in 1998 found that in eight countries where immunization coverage was reduced, Incidence rates of pertussis surged to 10 to 100 times the rate in countries where vaccination rates were sustained. You should know that the abbreviations for the common tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis vaccines can be confusing. They are often abbreviated Tdap, as its version for people over seven years old is known, or DTAP as is abbreviated for children under seven years of age. The brand names for this vaccination include Pediorex, which is for infants and young children, and includes polio and hepatitis B vaccines, along with the DTaP vaccine. For older children and adults, Boostrix or Adacel are common brands of the Tdap. Now, just how do these vaccines work, and what are potential side effects? For answers, you can go back to our website and see another video in our series titled Introduction to Vaccines, Why, What, and How. We also recommend two websites that have comprehensive, reliable information on how vaccines work. The first is at www.cdc.gov forward slash vaccines. I derived a lot of the material for this talk from the website at the CDC. The mission of the CDC, the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, 
is to save lives and protect people. The second website is that of the Immunization Action Coalition at www.immunize.org. These websites include extensive information about the risks and benefits of specific immunizations, including copies of the vaccine information sheets. You get a vaccine information sheet every time you receive a vaccination in our office. Each sheet specific to the vaccine you are to receive has information in easy to understand language. In conclusion, being vaccinated is the only way to be sure that ourselves, our loved ones, and future generations, our grandkids and beyond, will be safe from these vaccine-preventable diseases.